You stare at your monitor for hours every day, but if you're still using a monitor with a resolution of 1080p or even 1440p, you're missing out on sharper text, smoother visuals, and way more screen space found on 4K monitors. If you're not sure what your monitor's resolution is, odds are it's 1080p, the most common but far from cutting edge. The two big questions most people have about 4K monitors are, can my computer handle it and can my wallet survive it? Let's find out. Most 4K monitor reviews obsess over gaming, but the biggest upgrade might be something way more every day, reading. Seriously, reading text on a 4K monitor is like putting on glasses for the first time. Everything just looks crisp and clean, almost like a printed book. Let me show you. I used a camera to take a picture of two different monitors roughly on the same place within the same web page. This is a photo of the 1080 monitor and this is a photo of the 4K monitor. And here they are side by side. Now ignoring the pinkish discoloration that is common when you photograph a monitor, you can see that the 4K monitor provides smoother, crisper text. Now I know it may be a bit difficult to see the differences while watching this on video and you're probably on a 1080p monitor, but in person the difference is very obvious. With 4K, each letter has more pixels to work with. The result is text that looks more like it was printed on paper instead of displayed on a screen. With more pixels, the curvature of letters look much smoother. Web pages look better, email becomes easier to read, and spreadsheets don't make you want to scream at least as much. Photos and videos will naturally look sharper as well. And studies show that high resolution monitors tend to cause less eye strain. If you're a creative pro editing photos, videos, or design work, 4K lets you see details that just get lost on lower resolution screens. What you see is much closer to what you'll get in print or on export. And here's the real kicker. A 4K screen has four times the number of pixels of 1080p. That's essentially 2 million pixels versus 8 million pixels. Now you could fit four full 1080p windows on one 4K screen. Email can be in one corner, a browser can be in another corner, you can have a Word doc in a third corner, and a spreadsheet in the last one. But there's a catch. If your screen isn't huge, everything shrinks because more pixels are just packed into essentially the same amount of space. So Windows scales it up by default. On a 4K monitor, if you come here and just right click on the desktop and click on display settings, down here under scale and layout, you can see that Windows automatically sets the scale to 150%. So you're getting more text and other stuff on the screen, just not everything that could be on a 4K resolution monitor if you had it at 100%. So I can change this to 100%, let me do that. And you can see very quickly that got pretty small. Everything on the screen shrinks. Now if your eyes are good enough to see that, then you can leave it at 100%, but my older eyes need it a bit bigger. So I will set that back to, if I can even see it here, it's so small, set that back to 150%. And you still get more on the screen than you would get on a 1080p screen. Compare these two identically sized monitors, both on the same web page. The one on the left is set to 1920 by 1080 with scaling set to 100%. The monitor on the right is set to 4K, which is 3840 by 2160 with scaling set to 150%. You can see more of the web page on the monitor on the right. If you change the scaling on the right monitor to 100%, you can see even more of the web page, but it may be hard to read the small text. On my 43 inch 4K screen, I do have the scaling set to 100% because the screen is so large that I don't have any problem reading the text. The bottom line improvements you'll get from a 4K monitor are that you'll read faster and more easily, You'll work more efficiently, you'll enjoy a larger workspace, and everything just looks better. And all of that adds up if you're in front of a screen every single day. Before you rush out to buy a 4K monitor, make sure your computer can handle it. If a graphics card or display adapter in your computer may or may not output 4K video. To check, you can come down here to the search box and start typing device manager. And as soon as you do that, you'll start to see this up here. You can just click open. 
And when the device manager opens up, this device window, you just come down here to where you see display adapters. If you double click that, that will show you the name of your display adapter. I'm using that interchangeably with the term graphics card. Double click on that. And then if you come over here to the details tab, click that, and then that will show you the name of your graphics card. And I can just right click and copy and then I can just cancel out of here. I'll go to my web browser now. Just go to your favorite search engine and I can come over here and right click and paste. And now I can just type specs and hit enter. And now it'll show me probably the website that is from the manufacturer and then you can look up the specs for that particular card. So I can click on that and I can start looking down through to see if I can find HDMI and that shows you the HDMI here will support up to 4096 by 2160 at 60 Hertz and if I was using a display port on this particular computer I could even do up to 7680 by 4320. If yours doesn't support 4K don't panic desktop computers can be upgraded with a new graphics card. And if your computer was made after 2020, it probably already supports 4K. Now, gaming in 4K is a whole different story. You'll need serious GPU muscle for that. But for browsing, streaming, video, or office work, even a budget machine from the last five to six years can handle 4K just fine. Let me give you some general guidelines for the minimum specs you need. For basic 4K desktop use, like browsing the internet or using office programs like Word or Excel, most computers from the last five or six years work just fine. You need at least eight gigabytes of RAM and any decent graphics card from 2020 or newer. Again, gaming requires more power. You'll want 16 gigabytes of RAM and a graphics card with at least eight gigabytes of video memory. Professional work like video editing demands even more. I'd recommend 32 gigabytes of RAM and a high-end graphics card with 12 gigabytes of video memory. Another gotcha is cable and port requirements. Not all video cables work with 4K, and some cables will work with 4K but will not support higher refresh rates. The refresh rate tells you how many times per second that a new image is redrawn on the screen. You'll see this notated on your monitor specs as the number of hertz, which is abbreviated as HZ. For example, 60 hertz would indicate that the monitor refreshes the screen 60 times per second. 120 hertz would refresh 120 times per second and so on. So when you're buying cables, you need to read the specs for the cables carefully and make sure they meet the requirements of your particular monitor. Now, if you buy a 4K monitor and it includes cables, they will almost certainly support 4K video at that specific monitor's maximum refresh rate. Use the included cables if at all possible. Now, if you need to buy a longer cable, whether it's HDMI, DisplayPort, or USB-C, just be sure it's rated to support 4K video at the refresh rate your monitor requires. Using older HDMI cables from your 1080p setup likely won't give you the full 4K experience. Check your graphics card ports before buying a monitor. Some older cards only have HDMI 1.4 ports, which can support 4K, but only up to a 30 Hertz refresh rate. Now that you know your computer can handle 4K, let's take a look at this budget-friendly 4K monitor I just purchased. This is the Innocent 27C 1U-D. I bought this with my own money. This is not a sponsored video. And here's why I picked it. This provides 4K resolution, obviously, and it has a USB-C input, unlike other monitors. And finally, it was priced affordably. Let's go back in time just a bit. I'll show you how quick and easy assembly is and detail some other features. First thing I need to do is connect the support arm to the base. Very sturdy construction, this is steel. You can see the bottom here, this is where this is going to connect. And so I'm going to set that down there. And then on the bottom, this is just real simple. I'll just rotate this in, screw that in, turn that down so it's flat. And now connecting this to the monitor itself should be very simple. Just drop that in there and 
Snap that in and it is secure. Now there is a release if you ever needed to remove this. There's a release right here. So if I need to take that out, very simple. So I'll put that back in. And now the monitor is ready to go. Let's take a look at the articulation of this monitor. What I mean by that is which ways can it move once it's on the stand. A lot of monitors, the stand is not movable. But this one is actually very good. It will uh, allow you to turn this in 45 degrees, left or right. Turn it sideways so you can see. You can tilt it up or down to get the, just the exact angle that you need. And also, if you notice, this will go up and down. So based on how high you need it, you can adjust the height. And then finally, this does allow you to use the monitor in landscape mode, which is what it is now. Or if you wanted it in portrait, this will rotate. And there we go. So you could use it if you'd like to see long lists of emails, for example. Perfect way to do that. I'm going to use the USB cable for the video connection, so I will just plug that right in there. You'll notice this little circle right here. You can use that for cable management. So, for example, you could just route your power cable through there, and I've got my USB-C cable. Helps to clean everything up, make it look nice. I tested text clarity first, since that's what you'll notice most. You've already seen the comparison of the text. The photo of the 4K monitor was of this new Innocent monitor. This Innocent monitor has a refresh rate of 60 Hertz. The 60 Hertz refresh rate is what I consider to be the minimum you want when playing games. Monitors with refresh rates of 144 Hertz or even 240 Hertz are available, but they can add substantially to the cost. These higher refresh rate monitors are coveted by gamers because they do make gameplay smoother and they can reduce tearing of the video. I don't plan on doing much, if any, gaming on this monitor, so a 60 hertz refresh rate is perfectly acceptable. If all you plan to do is watch YouTube or Netflix, then a 60 hertz monitor will be absolutely fine. It's important to remember that gaming performance varies depending on your computer's graphics card. If you play a game in 4K resolution rather than 1080 or 1440, you will get reduced frame rates coming out of the graphics card. Frame rate, also called frames per second or FPS, is similar to a monitor's refresh rate, but it's not the same thing. FPS tells you how many frames of video your graphics card produces in a second. It can vary moment to moment depending on the size and complexity of the image it has to produce. For best results, your graphics card's frame rate should meet or exceed your monitor's refresh rate. This is an IPS panel, so it provides excellent colors and provides a wide viewing angle up to 178 degrees. Brightness tops out at 400 nits and contrast is 1001, both solid numbers for this price range. The build quality is solid for the price point. It has a plastic case but feels stable. The uh, ultra-thin bezel here makes it look modern, helping the monitor to take up less space overall. Port selection includes HDMI, DisplayPort, and USB-C. One of the main reasons I got this monitor was because it has the USB-C connection, as I mentioned, and that makes connecting this little mini PC easy since this PC has two USB-C ports that offer video output. So that's just a simple USB-C to USB-C cable. Now this monitor does allow the USB-C port to provide up to 65 watts of power to a connected device. So for example, if you wanted to provide power to your connected laptop, this port can do that, eliminating the need for the laptop's power brick, while simultaneously connecting the laptop to the monitor for use as a second monitor. Not all laptops can do this, but if it does, it's a great way to reduce wire clutter on your desk. Now back to the video ports, the HDMI and DisplayPort work just fine too, of course. Only a USB-C and HDMI cable were included with this monitor. All three types of cables deliver both video and audio, and this monitor does have built-in speakers. As with most monitors, the speakers aren't super high fidelity, but they do get the job done if you just need a simple, convenient way to listen to your computer. I pulled up a video on my YouTube channel and you can hear the speakers on this monitor. I'll play that. Kelly here, your nerd sidekick, and today I'm going to build a computer out of a computer. 
All right, so obviously you can't really tell how good they are, but I can tell you they're okay. They're not the best. Now there is an audio port on the monitor and you can connect external speakers to that. All right, I've got these really old speakers. I can hit play. Out of the parts that you see assembled here. This is what I call the slow and easy build. And I mean this for anybody who has never built a computer before. Obviously you can't really tell the difference other than maybe these sound a little bit louder on the video, but they, they are as good as they would be if you were just plugging this directly into the computer, except I've just been able to plug it into the monitor instead. There are five physical buttons on the front right. One is the power button here. The other four let you control the monitor's on-screen display. You can quickly adjust brightness or volume or go further into the controls and fine-tune additional settings. The buttons and menus are fairly intuitive. Let's talk about the size of this monitor, which is 27 inches. In case you weren't sure, monitor and TV size measurements come from the diagonal measurement. I wanted to get a 4K monitor for use in future videos for this channel, but I didn't want a 32 inch monitor because I felt that it would just be too big for use in, in the demonstrations on this desktop here. You can see size-wise how this Innocent 27-inch monitor compares to this 32-inch monitor. For typical use at a desk, this 27-inch size, I think, hits the sweet spot for 4K desktop use. Sitting at a normal desk distance, you can see the resolution improvements without text being too small. Bigger screens need you to sit farther back. The 27-inch format works well for both productivity and gaming use cases. And this size monitor is typically cheaper than a 32-inch 4K monitor. This monitor sells in the mid $200 price range. Similar size monitors are priced close to this monitor, but very few 27-inch monitors currently offer the USB-C port I've mentioned before. So that was the main feature that pushed me to this particular monitor. Monitors with higher refresh rates targeted toward gamers do cost significantly more. So if you don't plan to do much gaming, you can save money just by skipping those monitors. Color accuracy on this monitor works just fine for general use. You've seen a number of videos playing on the monitor here throughout this video, and the colors really do look amazing. This monitor does not include a USB hub. This monitor also has the ability to show two sources simultaneously. For example, I could connect this computer and another computer, or you might be let's say working on this computer, and you could also connect a streaming video stick like this Roku. So now I've got it connected, and you can see this picture in picture can be on any of the four corners, and I can also do it side by side. All right, now I've changed it to side by side. You can see there's some weird stretching going on. This would work better if you were actually using a two computers as the two separate sources. But you can get the idea of what the picture in picture does. It works pretty well. The Innocen 27C1U-D delivers solid 4K performance for the price, making it a smart way to get started with a 4K monitor. You get the main benefits of 4K without paying premium prices. The compromises are reasonable considering the cost savings. You can grab one of these by clicking my affiliate link in the description below. Now, if your monitor is more than three years old and you spend more than an hour a day on your computer, upgrading to 4K might be the best thing you can do for your eyes and your productivity. I've never regretted upgrading to a larger or higher resolution monitor. It's a change you'll feel and enjoy every single day. 4K technology is mature and is now more affordable than ever. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video over here, so click that and find out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.